Bitcoin's not real because it has no physical form. Have you heard this objection? It is admittedly one of the oldest and most tired out there, but today we are going to look at a cheeky way to address this concern and also serve as a great way to gift Bitcoin to those you care about. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur at Bitcoin Pub, an all-around raging capitalist, and tis the season for giving, my friends. And that is why in today's video, we are going to go into none other than the Open Dime from CoinKite, the same makers of the cold card hardware wallet. These are fantastic little devices. These really are the first sort of bearer instruments for Bitcoin, physical bearer instruments for Bitcoin. We're gonna talk all about what that means and how they work in today's video. So you won't wanna miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back my friends. It is great to have you. And for those new to the channel, and I know there are many of you, over 80% of you watching right this moment, are not currently subscribed. So if you like this content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including tutorials around wallets, running your own node, mining, uh, DeFi on Bitcoin, Lightning Network, you want it, I cover it. That is how this all works. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into the meat of today and talk about what these little devices are and how they work. So Bitcoin, is it purely digital? Is it, does it have an element of physicality? Uh, I once got into a very deep philosophic discussion with a friend over what were potentially too many drinks on either side. And we were debating this very topic. But if you really think about it, it's a combination of both. Bitcoin is fundamentally software, but that software has to run on hardware, whether that's uh, nodes that validate transactions and adhere to the consensus rules of the uh, of the user, uh, whether that's ASICs that, you know, that serve to secure the network in the form of mining, uh, and whether it's potentially hardware wallets that contain secure elements with private keys. You know, it, it really actually is quite interesting when you think about it, like there is a physical dimension to Bitcoin. Uh, and today we're gonna look at perhaps the most explicit manifestation of that, and it is this slick little device which is an open dime. And as you can see, uh, it has, you know, some very basic sort of circuitry on this, um, you know, basic little secure element. And we'll talk about how this works, but basically, you know, it serves as a little thumb drive. You know, you can insert it into, uh, into a computer and uh, generate receive addresses. And then um, we'll show later in the video how to release funds from the device. But, you know, number one, like this is a bit of a novelty. Uh, it's a great way, I think, to give folks a gift. Um, they'll come in packs of three. I'll flash up on the CoinKite website uh, just to show you. They've got this kind of uh, green special edition as well, um, which has the sort of, you know, look at this obsec here, you know, makes it look like a, a flash drive. Um, you can also get the sort of orange pack here as well. So very cool stuff. But like ultimately, you know, imagine a scenario or a situation in which perhaps you don't have access to the internet for whatever reason. Like this can serve as a physical bearer instrument. And so an example of this would be, you know, back in the days of physical gold, you know, of like a physical gold coin. That is a bearer instrument, um, meaning the bearer or the user, the holder, of that instrument is exchanging value that sort of has no strings attached, right? Even when we think about cash or physical fiat paper bills, those are simply IOUs because they're liabilities of the uh, sort of banking system. And so it's a neat concept. Like you could imagine putting a denomination on this of 50,000 sats and trading it back and forth amongst your, your friends. So let's talk about how this actually works. So first of all, in this pack, you get uh, the three open dimes and you get this little simple card. So let's jump over to the computer. All right, so we've got our open dime device plugged in here. As you can see, um, it will flat, it'll have this green light and it will flash red initially. And right now it doesn't actually have a private key created. So that's the first step. Now, when you first plug this in, 
you will get a um, folder come up or you should get a folder come up. If you don't, you can go uh, and look on your you know, computer's explorer and find the OpenDime uh, drive that's been plugged in. And so you'll see a couple pieces that they give you here. Uh, you've got a readme file, which is important. So let's just take a quick look at this because this will give us a sense of uh, some of the setup that's required. And so this is really, really cool. Basically, as you can see, this OpenDime is fresh and unused. hasn't uh, It hasn't picked a private key yet. It needs some randomness. So keep in mind that a private key is really just a very large randomly generated number. And what OpenDime is requesting here are sources of entropy or randomness. So it's not just going to kind of blindly go and pick a very large random number. Uh, it's going to do that based on some of the randomness that you yourself as the user add. Uh, and this is akin to um, those of you who are familiar with like dice rolls. Um, you can use dice rolls to add entropy when creating your seed. Um, different hardware wallets like the cold card allow you to do that. But that is what's happening here. And so it says all you have to do is save files onto this virtual drive. It will add all the randomness from those files into its own random number generator. It doesn't matter what the files are. So they could be like pictures. They could be whatever. Uh, and importantly, they are, of course, not preserved in any way. Um, photos that only you would have are great, uh, or it gives you some additional guidance. Once you've saved at least a certain threshold of randomness, your, uh, your um, private keys will be generated, and you will then also be able to generate addresses. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And so we're going to do just that. We're going to pull files. I'm just going to kind of pull some random photos um, into this drive. And once we do that, we will be right back. All right, so that didn't take much. Uh, I think it was probably like one or two uh, images. They were sort of complex images, uh, but that was enough to generate sufficient randomness. And you'll now see uh, I have a number of other pieces populated. I also have just the green blinking light uh, as you can see here on the device itself. Yeah, I've got you know the address uh, that's been generated. So this is uh, very cool. It's in legacy format, uh, which is fine. And furthermore, I've got this private key uh, file now generated. However, when you see, uh, when I open it for the first time, it says that it is sealed. And so we will discuss in just a moment how to unseal this in order for you to send funds from this device. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. And we can also see that the readme file is updated too once we've initialized it. Uh, and so, you know, it goes through the same, same sort of uh, initial bit, but then it says, how do I know this is a legit open dime? Um, check that verify and verify to text change each time you plug in so you can get uh, those verify files in the advanced uh, folder here. And then in terms of getting the funds out, we're going to actually break the cover over the hole on the device itself. And this is going to essentially impact the device in such a way that it, it reveals or opens the circuitry to the location where the private key is actually held. Um, and so the file contents will change once we do that. The private key in that text file we were looking at earlier uh, will be revealed. And as it says, there is no way back. So once unsealed, you should move the funds into another wallet. So think of these as, again, like one-time use in terms of sending funds from it. Um, the idea is that you can send funds to it and then pass that around physically as many times as, uh, as is needed um, but once, once you've kind of broken the seal and revealed the private key on the device, uh, as a best practice, it is certainly to, uh, you know, to send that out. Uh, and then it also gives a breakdown of, the, of what the lighting means. So green with a brief flicker, which is what the device is currently doing, uh, means it's sealed, funds are secure. Red and green alternating on a kind of constant rate, which we will see in just a moment, means that it is unsealed, the private keys have been revealed. Uh, and if it's a green solid with a brief periodic flash of red, which is what we were seeing earlier, it means that it is uh, not yet initialized. It hasn't been loaded with enough entropy to actually generate the key. 
Um, and then it has a full breakdown of all the files that are uh, contained herein. And so let's come back to the index.htm file. We will refresh this. And now you can see that I'm presented with a payment address. So this is great. I've got the QR code, I've got the actual uh, address, and it gives you some options on public uh, block explorers where you can check uh, the balance. If I click the verify button, it gives me confirmation that uh, the device does have control over the private key corresponding to this address. And if I check balance, we can correctly see, you know, there's of course nothing uh, yet on here. And you can double check that using any of the sort of uh, public block explorers, right? And you can indeed see there are uh, no transactions and nothing has been spent from this address. So good. So let's go ahead and load this up. And what I'm going to do is use my phone to scan the address here. And so I have, uh, I'm just using Blue Wallet on my phone, which is a mobile wallet, uh, Bitcoin wallet. I've done a whole tutorial on that. Um, but I've scanned the QR code and you can see that it updates pretty much immediately. I have, uh, I have an unconfirmed transaction of 50,000 sats that is inbound to this address. And so let's give this a moment to confirm and we'll be right back. All right, so as you can see on the screen, we've got a couple confirmations on our transaction. And so this device is now loaded up with 50,000 sats. And there are a number of use cases here. I could pass this around as many times uh, as I want. Um, you know, I could uh, make a payment for something offline and that would never register to the blockchain. So this could be great for, you know, private purchases uh, that you would, you know, that you would make in cash. Uh, but that you could make in uh, Bitcoin in this case. So those are some of the use cases, but once you're ready to spend from the device, you need to first unlock the private keys as we were discussing. And so what we're actually going to do is you can see the sort of arrow and uh, hole there, and we're going to get a, sh I just found this kind of, uh, like key ring thing, uh, probably not best practice, but find something you know small, sharp, because what you're gonna do is literally poke through the hole such that you're going to actually knock off this little almost resistor chip at the top right of the device right up here, right? So that is literally going to come off and that is going to change the circuitry of the device in such a way as the uh, private key will then be revealed and you can then um, spend the funds. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I know it's uh, hard to see, but I've basically poked all the way through the hole and have kind of dislodged the, the little chip here at the very top. So now what we're gonna do is we will plug this back into our computer and you'll see we will then have the private key revealed that we can import into a wallet and spend from this address. So we'll be right back. All right, so I've got the device back in the computer. As you can see, it is now kind of rapidly flashing green to red. And as we saw earlier, that means that it has officially been unsealed. If I were to go into the private key, you can see that I now actually have it revealed. So this is a private key. Of course, this is derived from a you know very long string of uh, binary zeros and ones. But what I can now do with this is import it into a wallet such as Electrum. Uh, there's a number of different wallets that you, know, you can import a uh, private key into but let's just go over to Electrum. I've done a whole tutorial on Electrum as well and go to File, uh, we'll do a uh, new and I'll say, you know, open dime test. We'll hit next and we'll go ahead and say import Bitcoin addresses or private keys. And I think I should be able to select a file. I can, I'll go to my open dime and I will open the private key. So there it is. We'll go ahead and hit next. Uh, I'll put a basic password on here and we'll do next. And there we go. 
so you can see I've now successfully imported my private key from the device into Electrum, and now I can spend these uh, 50k sats if I wish. So I can go to the send menu and um, you know pay out accordingly. So there you go, pretty cool little device. Again, that may have felt like a lot of steps, but um, think of the use case where this spending out is really only a one-time thing. And so you could load it up as many times as you want, pass around as many times as you want, uh, and then ultimately pay it out. So with all that, Let's go ahead and close this video out. All right, my friends, there you have it. We took a look at the Open Dimes device from CoinKite, the very first sort of bearer instrument, physical bearer instrument for Bitcoin. Uh, and so I think it's just a cool, number one, it's a cool kind of novelty gift. Uh, it's a great way to gift someone you care about uh, Bitcoin. But again, I hope this at least was interesting and made you think about the sort of nature of Bitcoin. If you're interested in these devices and you want to support the channel, I will put a link in the description down below. Um, so be sure to use that if you are interested in these devices. It really does help out the channel uh, and helps me put out better and more content such as this video. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave this here. I hope you found this valuable and interesting. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, questions in the comments down below. As always, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>